That's a that's the idea with when we're squaring things or we're raising them to the second power. And I think you guys know most of these. 8 squared? 64. Okay. Uh, how about 10 squared? 100. 100. Uh, 12 squared? 144. And you know, a lot of times when we get higher, you might know some of them, but <sighs> calculators are fantastic for doing things like this when they get really high. Although I would think anything up to 12 squared you guys can do. You know all those. Weren't those the fun ones to memorize when you were learning your times tables? Like 7 times 7? Yeah, we know 7 squared. Okay. Um, the ones you haven't done as much are things where they're raised to the third power or fourth power or fifth power. So we're going to do some uh, cubes or third powers. So we're going to do some stuff like this, one cubed. Now you have to be careful about this. A lot of times you want to say three. But if you think about it, yeah, it's one. What, it, what is one times one times one? one? Yeah, there you go. It's one. Even, even zero cubed. P.S. What is zero raised to any power? Zero. And what is one raised to any power? One. Okay. Now when we get to two, don't say anything. Uh, this is the one that is making this vein on my forehead stand out and nearly burst occasionally because uh, you look at it and you go six but two times two times two cannot be six can it two times two is four times two is eight that's correct you've got you've got to get that okay you've got to get that if you I know you probably haven't before but we are now um, 3 to the third power. 27. Good job. 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27. Okay. Uh, 4 to the third power. Did someone say 64? No, I said 16 times oh. 4. Oh, yeah. 16 times 4, 64. Oh. <laughs> That's right. 16 times 4 is 64. Um, 5 to the third power. This one's actually easier. 125. Yeah, 125. So 5 times 5 is 25, and then if you have 5 more quarters, isn't that a buck 25? Right? Dollar 25? Now, these I need you to know. Like memorizing times tables. These you need to get, get them in your head, have them down, be super good at them. Once you get above that, it's okay to use a calculator, and uh, you don't have to. You don't have to type in uh, six times six times six, though. You can hit six, and then see this little button right here. That's called an up caret, and you can say raise to the third power. So that that says six raised to the third power, two fifty six. Oh, two sixteen. Sorry, two sixteen. So, we can do, do things like that. So, exponentials, exponents, we've got to be able to do, do those. Now, I think you've done those in, in other years, haven't you? Is any of that new? Who's never seen that before? Okay, we've all seen that. You saw it on Alex or, or some, somewhere along the line. We've seen that. This, I don't know about this. See, we're not just talking about counting numbers or whole numbers now. We're talking about integers, aren't we? So we have to talk about negatives. And you guys got to know the difference and, and what's going on, what's happening. And parentheses make a difference, don't they? So if I were to do this problem, this is the way I would think about it. 3 squared is 9. And then the opposite of that is negative 9 because I'm doing order of operations. I'm thinking exponents come before subtraction, don't they? So I'm doing the exponent first, 9, and then I'm worrying about the subtraction bit. Now over here, it's a different story. Over here, I'm thinking negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. You see it? There's a big difference between those two things. Parentheses make a difference, don't they? So if I have the opposite of 4 squared, 
I'm going to see. I'm going to think. Okay, that's 16, and then what's the opposite of that? Negative, Negative 16. If I see it written this way, I'm going to think. Okay, negative four times negative four. Positive 16. Positive 16. Ooh. What do you think? You're going to have to practice that to remember it, aren't you? And we are. We're going to practice that quite a bit. Now with cubes, uh, let's see. Same thing works. This one, exponent first, right? Three times three times three? 27. And then what's the opposite? Okay. Over here, negative three times negative three times negative three. Did we get the same answer on those? Why is that? What? Yeah, we have, here we have one negative, do you agree? Mm -hmm. How many negatives do we have here? Three negatives. If you have one negative or three negatives, what's the answer going to be? Negative. It's going to be negative. What if you have five? Negative. What if you have seven? Negative. Okay, so w with the positive, one negative, or, or sorry, with the squares, one negative, that's going to give us negative 16, isn't it? But here, how many negatives are there? How many? There's two. Aren't there two? Do you see them both? Probably don't. They're not both written separately, are they? But this means negative 4 times negative 4. So there are two negatives. So that's going to be positive 16. Something we got to keep track of. Okay, you guys remember this symbol? <clears throat> Square root. Okay, when I write something like this, what is that symbol saying? What type of body this? You're very, very close. Good. What okay. Itself is this? Um, almost. You're leaving one little part out, which I'm sure you have never heard before. It says, what positive number times itself is 9? What positive number times itself is 9? So what's the answer? 3. Three. See, if it didn't say that, if it just said what number times itself is 9, well, isn't negative 3 times negative 3 positive 9? Isn't this true? Hey! You with me? Yes. Is this true? Yeah. Okay, well, if that's true, and this said what number times itself is 9, then the answer would have to be positive or negative 3, wouldn't it? They would both be legit answers. But we don't have to worry about that. The question is, what positive number times itself is 9? So, there's only one answer. What positive number times itself is 1? What positive number times itself is 36? Six. Six. What positive number times itself is 20? Ten. So there's not an integer answer here, is there? In fact, isn't this an irrational answer? Four point something, right? Okay, so not, not all roots are nice, pretty whole numbers, are they? Some of them are irrational numbers that we have a harder time dealing with. You won't be asked something like this. You're, all yours are going to be like, okay, what's the square root of 49? Yeah, okay, you can do that. Um, you will also get some of these, though. The cube root. Now, usually when we write this symbol, see, technically there's a 2 right there, but we're too lazy to write it. Did you know that? We're just too lazy. Square root, when it's a square root, okay, we just do this. And that's just four. We don't worry about it. But if it's another root, we worry about it. 
So this says what number times itself. Now this one doesn't say what positive number, okay, just what number. What number times itself three times gives us eight? Two. Yeah, there you go. Now there's no positive bit tied into this one because what number times itself three times is negative eight? Negative, negative. negative two. Now I would never ask you the square root of a negative number. Like, what is the square root of 20, negative 25? I'm not going to ask you that. Well, I'm going to ask you right now, but not normally. What number times itself is negative 25? Negative 5. No, see, negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. See, see, 5 times 5 is 25, and negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. Yes? No, what number times itself? What number times the same number? Okay, there is an answer to this question, but it's not on the number line. It's not a real number. It's not one that you need to worry about right now. So we're not going to ask you the square root of a negative number. Uh, it's a complicated answer. It's not on the number line. It's not a real number solution. So it's not something that we need to worry about. Hey, Augustine, are you going to pay attention or fall asleep? I already know the answer to that. You're, you're either texting in there in your lap or you're super interested about something down there or you're asleep. Knock it off. Okay. So every time I give you guys a square root, I'm always going to ask you the square root of a positive number. Okay. Now, if we do cube root, it might not be a positive number. What's the cube root of negative 27? Um, What's negative? negative? Isn't it negative? Mm -hmm. Negative what? Three? It is negative 3. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. And you're going to memorize that. You'll have it down pretty quick. I will ask you the cube root of negative 8. I'll ask you the cube root of, ooh, how about negative one? It's negative one, isn't it? Negative one. So we will do cube roots of negative numbers. Um, <clears throat> okay, so what are you gonna see today on your assignment? Now, if I were to ask you to do this right now, I don't think you'd get it right. Um, so, let's watch. Well, maybe this one. Okay, right here. Do what, is this three cubed or is it negative three cubed? Yeah. Or is it the opposite of three cubed? Oh man, that's confusing. Three times three times three? Nine. 27. What's the opposite of that? Negative. That's the order. This subtraction symbol's right here. Okay, negative three times negative three. Positive nine. See how this one's positive nine? Now, when I do the exponent, it stays in the parenthesis. The parenthesis doesn't disappear. So when you do an exponent like that, you need to put the answer inside of a parenthesis. Or it's not going to say multiply when it should. There are all kinds of problems. In this case, you probably could get away with it, but not normally. And then over here, I'm not going to put a plus down because there's a plus here. I'm going to look at the end. Negative 2 times negative 2? Positive or negative? Positive 4. And then I go back. Negative 27 subtract 9. Isn't that negative 36? Negative 36 plus 4? Positive or negative? Negative what? 32. Good job. Now, let me show you why we really worry about the parentheses a lot. Oh, does this, this, this look horrible? Yeah? No? You can do it. 
You can do it. There's nothing in here difficult. It's all just little, little things. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look to see, is there anything inside of a parenthesis that I can do? Yes. Are there any operations inside the parentheses? No. No. Okay. So, then I'm going to look for exponents and roots. So, I'm going to go through, well, this is easy. 2 squared? Four. Yeah, we never miss that one. Subtract 4. Now, what about this? Negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. Now, if I just put down negative 27, I just changed the problem, haven't I? Yep. Instead of multiply right here, I've ended up with an addition problem, haven't I? So when I do this right here, I'm, I'm not going to remove the parentheses. That parentheses is still going to be there. Does that make sense? So it says what it's supposed to say. Subtract 2, and then right here, now be careful, this is negative 2 times negative 2 positive 4, and then subtract 2. Okay. All right, let's go back to the front. Go through. Let's do the multiplication. So I have a negative 4 here. Uh, what's negative times negative? Positive. Positive. Now, you may not know what 4 times 27 is. That's fine. Um, but dang, you're good. But, but... Look, if you, if you don't know, there's a couple ways you can do it. I suppose you can just do the long, the long multiplication in your head. Um, I do it like this. I think of 27 as 25 plus 2. And then I say, well, I know what 4 times 25 is. What is that? 100. And I know what 4 times 2 is. And I know what 100 plus 8 is. What do you think? So I'm using the distributive property. I'm, I'm using the distributive property in my head to work this out. Now, even if you write it down 27 times 4, aren't you going 4 times 7 is 28, and then go 4 times 20 is 80, plus 20 more is 100? Aren't you still kind of using the distributive property? It's weird, isn't it? Um, subtract 2. So I've got negative 4 plus 108. 104. Subtract 2. 102. Hmm. Did we not do this part? Oh. So we've got a negative 8 there and a negative 2 there. So we didn't take this negative 8 out. So is that 94 then? Yeah. Good job. I think I got, I got focused over here for a minute. Okay. Awesome. Uh, let's... Take a look at this problem now. <clears throat> oh, Z. Z cubed times Y. Evaluate this expression when X is a 2 and uh, Z is a negative 3 and Y is a negative 2. So, I think you know generally how to do this, don't you? Would you all... That's something that's just natural now, isn't it? That's just something we do. Uh, you okay with that, Jonah? You haven't seen that as much as everybody, right? So we replace every variable with a parenthesis like this, and then we go back and we put these numbers inside. That way they say what they're supposed to say. It stays multiplication, and this says negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. That's a big difference, isn't it? This one says... Uh, times negative 2 rather than subtract 2. So when I go back to the front, I'm going to go 2 squared, that's 4. I'm going to go negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. Negative 27. Negative 27 and then negative 2. And then I'm going to look at that and go, you know what, the answer is positive. Yeah. Okay. Um, how do we want to do this? Do we know 4 times 27 already? Yeah. 
Wasn't that 108? We just did that one, didn't we? 108 times 2? Two? 216. 216. Okay. Let me show you one more. Evaluate uh, P times M squared, subtract Z to the third. Okay, so in this case, P is a negative 1, M is a negative 4, and Z is a negative 2. So if I don't see this on your paper, I'm just going to hand it back to you. Try again. You understand? There's no way you can do this correctly without showing the work correctly like this. I can't do it. I'm pretty sure you can't. So this is negative 1, this is negative 4, and this is negative 2. So anything inside of a parenthesis we can do? No. Thank goodness. So we have negative 1. Then this is negative 4 times negative 4? Positive 16. And this one is negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2? Negative 8. Negative 8. Nice. So I have negative 1 times 16. And then I have the opposite of negative 8. Positive, positive, eight. positive 8. And then I put them together. Negative eight. negative 8. And really, I need to see all of this on your paper. Okay? Uh, if, you're, if, you're, if I see this on the paper, written on your paper, and then I see this written on your paper, what is that telling me? You yeah, you wrote, it, you wrote down the problem, and then you looked it up in the back of the book. Zero. Okay, now we're going to do a bunch of problems together today. So here we go.